over three years, the Human Planet team has filmed people around the world. All had amazing endurance, local know-how and ingenuity. Just keeping up with them proved to be a huge challenge. The demands on our teams and kit pushed them to the limit. Filming on an active volcano in Java tested the cameras to breaking point. The crew were here to film sulfur miners. The air they breathed was a danger to both people and kit. I'm just going to go in there, a bit closer in with a gas meter and see what it does. It's reading 93 parts per million. It's going up to 194 now. So we're right in the middle of the cloud. Better get out. This is 40 times the safe working limit. The gas is a hydrogen sulfide mix that corrodes every surface it lands on. The gas masks protected the crew, but not the cameras. I think got an RF warning on the camera, which means that the signal's not actually getting onto the, onto the tape. It's like, usually a head clog. The crew found that sulfide particles had stuck to the tape head and open heart surgery was needed. That is absolutely filthy. After cleaning, the camera lived to work another day. Hey! <laughs> but the crew's problems were nothing compared to those faced daily by the sulfur miners. In the Sulu Sea off Borneo, Cameraman Simon Enderby filmed a remarkable free-diving fisherman called Sulvin. Here I was with the latest in scuba gear, and here was Sulvin in a pair of underpants and wooden goggles. We really made for a bizarre dive duo. To capture the perfect hunt, I had to match my scuba dive skills with those of Sublin's freediving, our buoyancy, our swimming, our search for food, and finally his successful capture of a fish, all had to evolve together. Luckily, on the third dive, it all came together and we both came up happy. Oh, wow, mate, that's, that's the one. That's definitely the one. In the Philippines, we filmed fishermen herding all the fish on a reef into a huge net. Here, we found that fish can be adaptable too. Cameraman Roger Munns inadvertently saved one fish from becoming supper. He nicknamed him Nemo. Nemo sheltered in Roger's dive kit and hid there until the coast was clear. Eventually, swimming off back home. We filmed in many locations where people had never seen film cameras before. In northern India, the children constantly looked into the lens. So, to get the shots he wanted, director Mark Flowers tried to distract the children by singing a song. I know he's singing <laughs> Much to his surprise, the children knew the nursery rhymes better than he did. Filming at height always involves complex safety measures. But in Central Africa, the crew had an added complication. Tim Fogg rigged ropes to film Tete collecting honey from a wild bee's nest. Unfortunately, the angry bees went straight for Tim. Smoke, smoke, smoke for Tim, quickly! 
The first thing I remember seeing was a bee right in front of my face with its abdomen twisted as if it was ready to sting me. They got inside? No, they were stinging through the face mask. They had Tim heavy bait. the gloves. After 30 stings, Tim fully appreciated Tete's bravery in gathering honey for his family. When filming people with animals, nothing's entirely predictable. In Greenland, director Nick Brown wanted to film the Inuit catching the elusive Greenland shark that lives in these deep waters. After an anxious 10 days, everyone was thrilled when in the middle of the night, they finally felt something on the line. We're very excited because we've all been playing with the line that's 800 metres down into the water and you can actually feel a shark on the end of it. Somewhere down there we think we've got a, uh, a Greenland shark on a hook, we're hoping. This is the hole for our underwater camera and this is the hole a shark for hole. the shark. They discovered they'd underestimated the hole size because the Jensen's had caught a huge four metre long shark. Coordinating helicopters with action on the ground is both expensive and difficult. But in Australia, director Susan McMillan had to coordinate three helicopters at once. Two of them were flown by heli cowboys Ben Tapp and his mate Rankin dicing with death to corral their cattle. The challenges of filming three helicopters in the air have been quite considerable on this trip because I'm filming it for real. It's not a drama, there's no take two. I have to actually capture the events as it happens and it's quite a dangerous situation. I've got three helicopters in the air, I've got quad bikes and horses on the ground, I've got stampeding cattle. So actually the biggest pressure I think has been safety. Working on the ground can be just as dangerous, especially when it comes to big cats. The crew wanted to film Dorobo tribesmen in Kenya chasing lions off a kill. So cameraman Toby Strong offered to film with them on foot to be in the thick of the action. The thought of getting out of a vehicle and walking towards lions on foot goes against every common sense bone in my body. I mean, and these guys are, these guys are amazing. They, um, they've got their bows and arrows. But um, I haven't got anything. I've got, I've got a camera and a lens cloth to protect myself with. It's all getting a bit real though. It's a bit butterflies in the stomach. Having located the lions, Toby followed the Dorobo as they moved in to have a look. Walking down there towards thick bushes where you know there are lions, it, um, God, it's something very primal in the back of your neck and uh, everything, hairs the back of your neck and you just feel these eyes on you. And, but you feel very, very alive. It's a magical feeling. It's, um, I sort of recommend it to everyone before going to work, have a walk through lion country. You know, gets things in perspective. <laughs> Yeah, amazing. Without the cooperation and support of all the people we filmed around the world, this series could not have been made. Their unique knowledge and survival skills have relevance for us all in an increasingly human planet.